So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk. No, I'm not breaking up with you. We just need to discuss something that has come to my attention. And since I am seeing more and more of this issue present, I want to give you all my thoughts on the matter. Quite a few individuals have been asking me about 5G. And not just a few people. Dozens of people have been asking me to cover this. And some have asked if this has anything to do with the situation we are all now dealing with. You know, I don't know anyone who has anything good to say about 5G. But I didn't hear anyone complaining about the last four generations of mobile communication that we've been living with. Why is that? What is bothering people so much about this fifth generation? There are people who are convinced that some of the conspiracy theories surrounding 5G are absolutely true. Some even believe that people are getting sick due to 5G and not from infection. So what I am going to do, and I have explained what 5G is before in an older presentation, go back and watch that. It's an important video. So. I will explain it again and we will take a deeper look at what is truly going on with 5G because as long as people sit there and speculate not knowing for sure what 5G will do to us we will fail in protecting ourselves and our loved ones I want you to have a better understanding 5G is here folks they were never going to stop at 4G we knew that years ago so the best thing for us to do right now is to gain knowledge so that we have the ability to live healthy lives in this next generation. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain 5G and what it does. I'm going to explain how it affects us physically and mentally. And if you are one of the fortunate ones to view this information, I'm going to give you the solution to this issue. If you were to go back and watch most of my earlier videos, there is a reason why I have presented certain information, such as nutrition, grounding yourself, radiation, Planet X. See, this channel is not a place to just rant, whine, bitch, or complain. We offer solutions here. I'm not just going to put up a 5G rant and then yell at you all to wake up and just end the video, no. I promise you that by the end of this video, you will have more clarity and understanding of the situation. And, and, you will have more confidence when walking around this plagued planet. Now, let's go slow. In the Bible, we have what's called Bible prophecy. The elite class, the powers that be, the true rulers or controllers of the system that we live in, they know of these prophecies. They understand these prophecies and they believe them. Even when they are on the side of evil, they still believe in what God is going to do just as well as these demonic forces or fallen angels know what God is going to do. Now, years ago, I would say actually around the early 1900s going into the 1950s, the individuals who were in power then learned of something. They took a look into the heavens and realized, oh crap, it's real and it's coming. So 
mathematics and exponential growth is important for everything we are dealing with right now. When numbers start to multiply, the numbers grow slowly until it reaches a tipping point. And then the numbers suddenly double or triple or quadruple within a very short period of time. In the 1950s, the world population back then was only around 2.5 billion people. And because back then the ruling class knew mathematics, they understood how big the human population would grow as of today, which is around 7.5 billion. Now, when these people form an agenda, they set up multiple tracks, multiple lanes they can go down to get to the same end goal. For example, if they want to activate martial law across the country, they have maybe 50 different tracks and will use all 50 different tracks until one of them leads us to that state. And they set up these agendas 50, 60, 70 years in advance. So, if you are these people who rule the world and are living in the 1950s with around 2.5 billion people, and you know that a great threat is coming upon the earth around our time, and you also know that the population size will be closing in on 8 billion people worldwide, then you would probably try to set up a population control agenda, which is now a depopulation agenda. Because during a cataclysmic event, it is much easier to control just a couple billion people rather than around 8 billion people, because that will be out of your control once the crap hits the fan. Are you with me so far? Now keeping all this in mind, let's fast forward to 5G. So what we had in the beginning was the first generation, which was an analog system, you know, the old corded heavy telephones. That system relied upon a bunch of wiring to work. The second generation brought in a global system of mobile devices with GSM, Group Special Module, GPRS, General Packet Radio Service, and EDGE, Enhanced Data Rates for GPS Evolution. And these systems were developed to allow new mobile devices to constantly be added to the network. The third generation came along so that they could increase data storage and connectivity speed. Now the frequencies we were using on the 3G network, because more people started using mobile devices and more people were joining the network, they had to open up new frequencies on the spectrum to accommodate this. And they had to make it also affordable. So then came the fourth generation, 4G and 4G LTE, or long-term evolution. Now remember, cancer rates jumped as this 4G technology was released. And the network has yet again come to another phase of evolution because people use it now more than ever. Folks, the 4G we are still using now causes health issues and have been for a while now. So here we are at 5G. So instead of having a cell phone tower, we will have what's called a massive MIMO, which is a maximum input, maximum output antenna, increasing the output of power that is needed to run 5G. That is accessible by a device directly through a macro channel, okay? Each of these are placed at a macro base station. Each of these massive MIMOs are not just a single antenna, but they are a group of many antennas in one. These antennas emit millimeter wave frequencies, which is between 30 and 300 gigahertz, which is between microwaves and infrared waves, okay? There are also what's called small cells, placed at small cell base stations, so that transmission can go from the massive MIMO to the small cells, then to a user device on a small cell channel. These are placed everywhere because these direct beams don't like to travel through buildings and such. Now, instead of using the waves we've been using to transmit in all directions, this system uses beamforming, 
which is like a tractor beam or ray that targets the small cell or device you're using directly. Beam forming technology was known about in the 40s. And what it does is it allows a signal to be transmitted at a higher quality speed with fewer interferences. Newer network Wi-Fi routers and network cards today are already set up for this. What you have to all keep in mind is that these companies that are putting out this technology, like the ones that manufacture cell phones and offer cell phone service, they are creating variations of their own 5G technologies. So not all 5G technology will be created equal. All this is done to allow for an increase in user capacity, data storage, accessibility, and speed. And this is basically how the 5G transmission works. But there is a catch, and that are the EMF or electromagnetic frequencies that this system puts out. What do EMFs do to you? Well, first of all, let me read to you an abstract from the U.S. National Library of Medicine of the National Institutes of Health. Pay close attention. This is important. It reads, The most influential process of EMF impact on living organisms is its direct tissue penetration. The current established standards of exposure to EMFs in Poland and in the rest of the world are based on the thermal effect. It is well known that weak EMF could cause all sorts of dramatic non-thermal effects in body cells, tissues, and organs. The observed symptoms are hardly to assign to other environmental factors occurring simultaneously in the human environment. Although there are still ongoing discussions on non-thermal effects of EMF influence. On May 31st, 2011, International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, Agenda of World Health Organization, WHO, has classified radio electromagnetic fields to a category 2B as potentially carcinogenic. Electromagnetic fields can be dangerous not only because of the risk of cancer, but also other health problems, including electromagnetic hypersensitivity. EHS. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity is a phenomenon characterized by the appearance of symptoms after exposure of people to electromagnetic fields. Generated by EHS is characterized as a syndrome with a broad spectrum of nonspecific multiple organ symptoms, including both acute and chronic inflammatory processes located mainly in the skin and nervous systems, as well as in respiratory, cardiovascular systems, and musculoskeletal systems. WHO does not consider the EHS as a disease, defined on the basis of medical diagnosis and symptoms associated with any known syndrome. The symptoms may be associated with a single source of EMF or be derived from a combination of many sources. Reported symptoms associated with electromagnetic fields are characterized by the overlapping effect with other individuals with these symptoms exhibited a broad spectrum of clinical manifestations related to exposure to a single or multiple sources of EMF. The phenomenon of electromagnetic hypersensitivity in the form of dermatological disease is associated with mastocytosis. The biopsies taken from skin lesions of patients with EHS indicated an infiltration of the skin layers of the epidermis with mastocytes and their degranulation, as well as on release anaphylactic reaction mediators such as histamine, chymase, and tryptase. The number of people suffering from EHS in the world is growing, describing themselves as severely dysfunctional, showing multi-organ nonspecific symptoms upon exposure to low doses of electromagnetic radiation. 
often associated with hypersensitivity to many chemical agents, multiple chemical sensitivity, MCS, and or other environmental intolerances, sensitivity-related illnesses, SRI. Now, after you have just heard all of that, I have one more document of research to introduce to you. You can find this at researchgate.net. I'll leave the URL in the description box below. This report is based on 23 controlled scientific studies to show the effects on the health of animals, cells, human cells, and human beings. Some of the findings show that, and I quote, Wi-Fi exposures produce impacts on the testes leading to lowered male fertility, oxidative stress, apoptosis, a process that has an important casual role in neurodegenerative disease, cellular DNA damage, a process causing cancer and germline mutations, neuropsychiatric changes, including EEG changes, hormonal changes. And this is probably why many people today are starting to act like nuts. Also, according to this report, the U.S. Office of Naval Research study of 1971 reported this. A total of 35 neurological, neuropsychiatric effects of non-thermal EMF exposures, including nine central nervous system effects, four autonomic system effects, 17 psychological disorders, four behavioral changes and EEG changes. It is also reported seven types of chromosomal aberrations, several of which are known to be caused by chromosomal double-stranded DNA breaks, eight types of endocrine changes, and cell death, what we now call apoptosis. There is one more point I want to present from this report, and that is about VGCCs, or voltage-gated calcium channels. It says here, the main pathophysiological effects of EMF exposures are produced via excessive calcium signaling and the peroxynitrite pathway. Peroxynitrite levels are elevated because both nitric oxide and superoxide are elevated by increased calcium with nitric oxide and superoxide reacting with each other to form peroxynitrite. Peroxynitrite and its CO2 adduct can break down to produce reactive free radicals, hydroxyl radicals, carbonate radicals, and NO2 radicals, which produce oxidative stress. These various oxidants act to produce greatly elevated NF-kappa B activity, leading to inflammation. In other words, you have electrolytes that your body needs, right? And these are minerals like potassium, calcium, chloride, sodium. And the EMFs causes peroxynitrite levels to increase, causing an increase in calcification of your cells by these minerals. This increases free radicals in the body. This also leads to oxidative stress and disease. Some of the effects on the body of EMFs are immediate and some are cumulative and are developed over time as the EMFs around us are increased. I encourage everyone to go and read this report. A lot of important information there. Again, the link will be in the description box below. Now the question many have been asking is, what is the relationship between 5G and this bug that is going around? Well, what you need to know is that viruses are real. This virus is real. Now 5G doesn't help, it makes it worse, but do not try replacing one threat with another. They are both separate things that unfortunately both affect your health in a negative way, depending on your sensitivity and the shape your health is in. 5G can exacerbate the effects the bug can have on the body. It can cause disease and inflammation, but 5G does not spread the bug. People do. 
people are thinking that 5G is what's causing fatalities because 5G produces symptoms that can be mistaken for some type of infection. Do you follow me? But viruses and superbugs are efficient at doing that all by themselves. But fortunately, there is a way to protect yourself from 5G EMFs. The best way to protect yourself from EMFs is exactly the same way you protect yourself from this bug. It's all about what you eat. It's your health. It's nutrients. God designed us with all of this in mind, folks. He knew this was coming. Our bodies are equipped to handle EMFs. What you want are antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, selenium, zinc, Vitamin E, vitamin C, melatonin, resveratrol, those phytonutrients you get from almonds, eggs, flax seeds, kale, salmon, strawberries, which are great for sticking to heavy metals and carrying them out of the body. Grounding. If you haven't watched my video on grounding or earthing, go back and watch that video. It helps carry free radicals out of the body. Also, the way you reduce your exposure to the bug by staying home, you just reduce your exposure to EMFs by turning things off when you're not using them. Don't just leave your Wi-Fi on when you're not using it. Turn things off and unplug them when you go to sleep. Go outside without these electronics all over you. Take a break from all that and eat some good food. EMF protection devices may help as well as downloading an EMF detection app to your mobile device. We are not helpless, everyone. But you are not going to stop these big tech companies from doing what they do. And do you know why? Because you all buy and use their stuff. It's as simple as that. Now, I think I've covered what I needed to in this presentation, there is more information in previous videos and there is more information on this matter to come. I really, truly hope that this helps clear some things up for you guys. Conspiracy theories are not something you want to propagate. Instead, you want to propagate the truth, not what you think is happening. Do some research. I mean, is it that hard to pick up a book or should I say pull up a book written by people who know what they're talking about? Is it really that hard to look up definitions of terms? To learn about what molecule does what? I encourage self-reliance, due diligence, and self-education. Not the spreading of rumors and hearsay. I mean, I'm into conspiracy theories. I talk about crazy things. But don't be a fool. I can tell you what's going to happen. After this is all over, they are probably going to come after and take down those who have said this bug thing is a hoax. We are just going to lose more alternative, independent, truther media and channels. I know of specific people who have caught this thing, and I know how they caught it. This ain't no hoax. It's one of the things I've been trying to prepare you all for for the longest time. Time is short and we all really need to get it together and learn and understand how certain things operate and what certain things do. It is really up to us how we come out of this, not them. But if you want to make it their responsibility, you can certainly do that. I hope you all have a pleasant evening. There is, of course, more madness to come. I love you guys. Stay awake, stay aware, and for the love of God, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.